are the images of conquest. The conquest of man and his machine over nature and her hidden treasure. This is man's contriving against nature's cunning. For nature has hidden deep down under the land many of the resources that are most precious to man. And man must ever struggle and toil and burrow deep into the earth to lift its bounty out to make good use of its treasure. Thanks to the oil pioneers of our country, the conquest is a winning one. But this work is for a tough man, for a man who can meet nature on her own terms. stream of civilization and man will seek it out and get it if he has to go halfway to hell for it this is triumph in the making the business of producing oil oil for transportation on the sea on the land and in the air. Oil for man's machines, large and small. Oil for heating in homes and factories. Millions of barrels to make steam for giant electric power plants. But beyond these well-known everyday usages are thousands of new different ways in which oil is contributing to a good way of living. This little drop of oil, for instance, might eventually be used to add tang and zest in a soft drink, in the concoction of its flavor, or even in the straw. This drop of oil might be put to work in a foundry to serve as an efficient binder in the core sand, to make possible better metal castings, or it might be used in the world of sport as a means of speeding the race and intensifying the thrill of competition. Oil might serve its purpose too in places far removed from the world of industry. Even the glittering sequins on a dancer's costume may be made from oil. Or it might be found in the film and photographic emulsion of this very motion picture. Oil is used in the making of special glass to permit the passage of ultraviolet rays and thus promote better health. Oil in a bowling ball Oil in the smooth finish of the alley. Oil in the protective coating on the pins. Science has found ways to use oil in the production of nearly all modern commodities. And it may be said that the standard of living of any nation today closely parallels that nation's scientific utilization of petroleum. Naturally, to fulfill such a great variety of needs, tremendous quantities of oil must be produced. During the 18 seconds it takes to say these words, almost a thousand barrels of oil are being brought up out of the ground in this country. This means that each day sufficient oil is produced in the United States to supply each of us with a gallon and a half. Although the population of the rest of the world is 20 times that of the United States, 
The rest of the world produces only enough oil each day to supply its average citizen with just six and one half ounces. Now of all the oil produced in the United States during the entire history of the industry up to the present time, we have produced and consumed 20% of it during the last five years. Thus we see that the greatest development of the oil industry has been made very recently. Among the numerous factors that have contributed to this remarkable development is electricity. Following the pattern of experience in so many other fields of industrial accomplishment, the oil producing industry too is turning more and more to the utilization of electric power. This trend is inevitable. For in electricity lies the inherent fulfillment of the oil man's creed. And that creed is simply this. Increased production through efficient, economical power. Electricity is helping the oil man achieve greater capacity for discovery and recovery. Greater potentials of production. Greater potentials of production. That's what we need if we're going to keep up and improve our standard of living. Take drilling. Authorities say that to maintain our going rate of production and allow enough for reserves, we've got to average over 37,000 new well completions each year for the next few years. That's more than a hundred new wells every day. And that's a lot of drilling. As the result of more than 30 years experience in electrical drilling, of shallow wells, medium depth wells, and deep wells, plus recent new developments in electric rigs, equipment, both AC and DC, is available to do a good job of drilling in any field. An electric motor in principle is simply a rotating machine with very few wearing parts. Its output can't fall off with long, hard use. Here's an AC drilling motor which has seen continuous service for over 15 years. Its maintenance consists of an occasional inspection and lubrication. And its output is the same as when it was new. Because it has few wearing parts, a large spare part stock is not necessary. Now it's all cleaned up and ready to go to work on a new job. Electric drive simplicity means that there's no extra weight. So on ordinary terrain, it's easy to move from a finished well to a new one in the same field. Once your equipment's at a new location, considerable time is saved in rigging up and later on in tearing down. And hooking up is often simply a matter of plugging in the cables to the controls. The motors for DC drilling are sturdy, light in weight, and fully protected. For DC drilling of deep wells, we'll need rigs with more capacity and more power. In the future, we're going to have to drill more wells below 10,000 feet, and some as deep as 18 or 20,000. With electric drive, there's less need for clutches and gears in the powertrain of the rig. The control panels are the brains of the whole electrified system, and the motors do what the controls tell them to. The driller is provided with 100% flexibility and torque-limiting control. He gets an even, smooth application of torque, and a full range of speed either forward or reverse. On electric rigs, the driller has the same kind of controls he's been used to. And when he gets accustomed to the sensitivity of a system in which a little energy is amplified into thousands of foot-pounds, he'll never want to drill any other way.
The power is there when he wants it, automatically controlled and safe. On barge rigs, many miles from land, engine-driven generators can be used to supply the electric power. One of the latest developments in drilling is amplidyne control. A change in a small control current is capable of regulating the full line pull of the rig at any speed. The electro-hydraulic engine governor, in combination with the amplidyne, prevents the engine from stalling and automatically reduces its speed when full power and full speed are not required. A turn of the wheel and the engine comes up to speed. The motor drive goes to maximum torque and begins to hoist the drill pipe. There is no engine stalling because there is constant horsepower output on the generator. The hoist is completed. The engine returns to idling speed. All this is coordinated and fully automatic. No possibility of overloading the engine, nor has the driving motor been injured by stalling. Electric drive's flexibility gives the driller any combination of torque and speed while maintaining a constant horsepower. And when he has to fish, the same control is there to slowly revolve the tool to help the driller feel out the fish and gently apply proper pull at slow speed. Hmm, it sure looks easy the way they do it in the movies. This model shows how several miles of drill pipe whips like boiled macaroni when excess weight is applied. However, automatic electric weight control available in a packaged unit can correct this condition and enable you to drill faster, straighter, save on bits and cut down round trips. Round trips add unproductive time to drilling jobs. Anything which reduces round trips with faster, more positive operation means savings in drilling costs. Here, each stand of pipe is being pulled faster than the one preceding it. As the load becomes lighter, speed increases automatically and safely. Modern electric rigs are cutting drilling time, reducing costs, and getting more wells drilled to meet America's needs. Production of more and more petroleum to fulfill more and more requirements means that as many as 19,000 wells will go on pump during each year for the next several years to come. We've got to replace old equipment with modern methods of furnishing power. Naturally, the most efficient way to produce a well is to pump it at the rate that fluid flows in from the oil-bearing formation. Now, all that's needed to start an electric motor is to put two wires in contact. If you're using the automatic time clock control of electric power, you can preset the right off and on cycle to get the most oil from that particular well. Once set, the pumping is handled automatically. The clock knows the time of day and is even smart enough to select the day of the week. So if the pumper wants to catch up on his housekeeping duties, it doesn't make any difference at the well. Production is automatically maintained by pumping the well when it should be pumped. The pumper's job is made a lot easier, even if the wells are not equipped with automatic time clocks. Maybe Dad's arms and back aren't as strong as they used to be, but it's easy for him to take care of many more electrically pumped wells. Because it is easy for him, men are made available for other important work around the lease. Another thing, 
It doesn't make a bit of difference whether the temperature is above 100 or whether it's way below zero. An electric motor starts easily in any weather, and it's good for years and years of continuous service. One of the big reasons why an electric motor lasts so long is its natural built-in smoothness. Whether the individual well is the kind that needs coaxing along by pumping slowly for long periods, or whether it's the kind that should be pumped faster during short periods. There's a lot of variation in the amount of power you need during a single complete pumping cycle. Seems like an electric motor can feel the exact amount of power required at any time. It slows down a little at peak load. And this built-in feel for the job acts as a cushion against shocks and strains and sudden jolts. And in electrical pumping, your operation costs are less because you buy only the power you really need. Adjusting the counterbalance on an electric pumping unit is a simple job. A hook-on ammeter gives an indication of power input at any stage of the up and down stroke. So the balancing of the counterweights with the lift of the rods and the oil is easy and precise. You save time, machinery, and money because you have that extra evenness of power. The motor is air-cooled, and there is no possibility of loss of production in locations where there are bad water conditions. On leases where a power is used to pump a number of wells, there's even more equipment to wear out and to break down. Yes, it pays to apply smooth driving power when wells are spaced so that central power can be economical. But oil wells are like people. No two are exactly the same. So if you want to get rid of power loss in the rod line and get individual well pumping, you can string power lines to a small electric motor at the well and save that five horsepower per mile loss you get from the use of rods. With electricity, each well is certain to be pumped according to its own best production time cycle. An electric motor packs so much horsepower per pound that on new installations, the convenience of moving it around really saves a lot of time and trouble. It can be put to work where it's needed, when it's needed. Portability of equipment is important in the oil producing business and it's every bit as valuable to the pumper as it is to the driller. When electric power goes to work on a job, it does it quietly with maintained efficiency. There's no need to figure on any downtime because an electric motor doesn't need any tuning up, pampering or day-to-day -day attention. The hydraulic type of pump can be adapted for electric drive, which utilizes economical electric energy at the surface for its operating power. Then there's the submersible pump, the kind that carries its own motor to bottom hole with it. The power is run right down to the point from where the fluid has to be lifted. So, it doesn't make any difference what particular method of pumping you're using. Might be some kind of modern unit or the old standard rig. A central power. Hydraulic bottom hole pumping. Or centrifugal bottom hole pumping. The right kind of equipment is available at convenient locations every item designed and built for oil field service. 
And a word to the boys who push figures around. When electric power is used, you always have at your fingertips complete, accurate, exact cost records so you can tell just how you stand at any time. Electric utilities are set up to furnish cost studies and give practical help on economical operation. Your inquiries regarding new applications are always welcome. Banking on the worry-free operation of electrical equipment, cost-conscious producers are using electric power to cut their pumping costs by as much as 23% in many electrified fields. With the increased need for oil, the use of secondary recovery methods is getting more important all the time. One of the latest methods for determining recovery potentials is the electrolytic model oil field. With accurate planning, the same quantities of oil that used to take from 25 to 50 years to produce now can be removed in from three to five years. We know that often more oil is produced from the same field with modern secondary recovery methods than was produced during the field's entire primary recovery operations. No matter what method is used, air or gas repressuring or water flooding, the same general advantages of electric power can be applied to water injection pumps. To gas repressuring equipment and to dehydration systems, Stripper wells are depended on for a sizable proportion of our total production. Operators select electric power to produce these wells profitably, even though the fluid they're lifting may be 95% water. In various cycling systems and in the job of salt water disposal, in such operations as skimming, the aerating of the water, chemical treatment, sterilization, settling and filtering, electric power can make all your pumping and compressing operations easy and economical. As each day goes by, America's electric power lines are being extended. Electric power is being brought into more and more out-of-the-way areas, keeping pace with the far-reaching search for more oil. Electric power can be run into a proven field as soon as it is economically practical. Power in the exact amount needed, at the time it's needed, is available for draw works and mud pump and other equipment. As time goes by and the wells go on the pump, the same dependable power is there for the operation of the pumping units. For gathering pumps, for dehydration, and, of course, for secondary recovery later on. With electric power available, you can have flood lighting on the rig, lighting for buildings, bug fans to provide better working conditions on the rig, and power for machine tools and auxiliaries in the field repair shop. Local and field communications can be made with FM radio. Then, too, there's carrier current communication, in which power lines are used to carry the voice. Electric service in the lease house makes refrigeration and the preparation of foods a lot easier. It provides entertainment and comfort in leisure hours. and convenience and better living in the camp. Although oil is produced in many areas of the nation, the points of use are often located far from the fields. Pipelines are the arteries of the industry, and the transportation of oil has got to keep pace with America's need for oil. Naturally, the idea is to run the crude easily and quickly from the producing field to the place where they can make something of it. 
Sometimes this operation can be almost entirely automatic, and many lines are fully automatic. The oil can be pumped, gathered and metered into field storage tanks without a tension. Electrically operated valves are closed when tank levels are high enough, and many combinations of automatic intake and flow-out systems can be worked out. There's usually no one around an electrified station. Many of them are kept locked, and an attendant makes a routine check once a week, or can be summoned by automatic warning signals. Maintenance and overhaul are almost non-existent in electrified stations. Management can relieve its worries about operation, and many well-trained men can be made free to spend their time in running the business with the highest efficiency. Rehabilitation of an older pipeline with modern electrical equipment makes it possible to operate it competitively with the newest line. Whether it's a trunk line, a branch line, or a gathering line. Fixed charges on electric pumping equipment are relatively low compared to fixed charges on non-electric equipment. During the life of the line, when field depletions and other factors cause deliveries to fall off, electric drive means real economy. Electric pumping costs go down fast whenever equipment is not fully utilized. One completely electrified line reports 40% less operating costs month after month compared to a similar line using a different type of power. We've learned that electric drive is simple in principle, easy to use. It works especially well with high-speed pumps. It can be direct connected and that means fewer gear units. Comparatively, it doesn't weigh much. It's compact and handy, easy to hook up and to maintain. It's a good way of getting more work done at less cost. Electricity is flexible and versatile, so it'll do a lot of different kinds of jobs. In lots of instances, it handles itself automatically. It's smooth, clean, and quiet and the efficiency of electrical equipment won't fall off with long, hard use. The modern operator can rely on such devices as the float switch, the pressure switch, the electric eye, the remote control gauge, the electric time clock, and a lot of other self-operating controls. New ideas for electricity are being developed all the time to make the oil man's job easier, more efficient, more economical. Oil and electricity. Electricity and oil. Great industries working together today planning together for tomorrow to the end that all men may have in full measure the benefits of the treasure that lies deep beneath these towering symbols of the oil industry's achievement to the end that a man's work and a man's play may be ever better in many ways to the end that the oil man may attain a new lease on the future More power to America. More power to American Petroleum. See you later, boys. Keep your joints tight.